Good day, good day, good day, and welcome to another episode of Drew's Book Reviews. Today, we're going to talk about elements of good storytelling. Stay tuned, that's coming up here on Drew's Book Reviews. Well, good day, good day, and welcome to Drew's Book Review. So let's talk about what makes a good story. What are elements that are important in good storytelling? Now, of course, this is all my personal preference. This has nothing to do with me saying that if you don't include this, you're a bad writer, or if authors that don't do this are bad at writing or telling stories. Nothing like that at all. These are just things that I personally feel really make for a good story. And of course, as always, check out down below for links to all the socials, you know, uh, Dragon's Den Discord, Bookstagram, hardcover, all that good stuff. Anyway, let's talk about it. What makes good storytelling? So there are several things that I personally find make for a good story. And these are not necessarily need to be universally included in every book out there, but I'll endeavor to tr provide some examples uh, to kind of contrast what I mean by that. Uh, so one of the big elements that I think is important in good storytelling is it has to make sense for the world that you have created or alternately the world in which you're writing in. In fiction, for example, you're often writing in this world. So what you're talking about, how you're writing, how you portray your characters has to make sense for this world, has to make sense for the narrative, and it has to make sense for how the character themselves are written. A really good example of this executed poorly would be in Terry Goodkind's Law of Nines. This book basically, and I've said it before on the channel, was written more like an expose or an essay on the evils of gun control. In this book, our main character is often referenced as saying that she doesn't care about the law. She doesn't care whether it's legal to carry her gun with her wherever she goes. It's a matter of safety. It's a matter of protection. It's a matter of, you know, right to carry and all this kind of stuff. And then throughout the story a few times, it's, well, she didn't bring her guns with her because she wasn't allowed to. And yet in other area, parts of the book, she said she brought her gun with her and she really didn't care whether the law allowed her to or not. And so there was a contradiction in how that characterization was written. It didn't work within the story. It didn't make sense with the character and it just didn't work well. So these are the things. So it's so important that when we're writing, when we're reading a story for a good story, the characterization and the world in which you built upon this must make sense in consistency within the world. Of course, this doesn't mean that everything in the world has to be realistic. Uh, in that sense, I mean, come on, I read fantasy and science fiction, most of which it ain't real, not by a long shot, nor is it realistic, and in a lot of cases, improbability implausible. But when built around the right way, when told the right way, where everything makes sense within the world in which you've created and doesn't contradict itself, that is an element of good consistency in storytelling. Characters are allowed to change their viewpoints and how they think and feel about things, but we've got to be able to demonstrate that through characterization and character development and not just wishy-washy back and forth. So that is one of the things that I feel make for good and important characterization. This, or storytelling, that kind of goes right along with the idea of plausibility. So when we look at the world from which are created, whether that's science fiction, fantasy, or fiction, we need an element of plausibility. This goes beyond just having that consistency within the world where we don't have contradicting facts. We also have to have actions, events, magical systems, and everything else uh, the world in which we're created, the elements of that world, it all has to plausibly work within the construct of the world in which you've created. There are many cases, and there are things that do happen where it's outside of the realm of plausibility, or it simply doesn't make sense in a lot of ways. And I find this especially relevant in the world of science fiction in a lot of cases, where we have things that just are plausibly inconsistent with how you're writing and setting the story itself. I've read some science fiction books, for example, that are supposed to be set in our galaxy or, our, or even our solar system, which refer to things like the Kuiper Belt out, out between Mars and Jupiter, which just isn't the case. Uh, the Kuiper Belt being on the outer fringes of our solar system. Now that might just be me nitpicking, but I've seen it happen and it just kind of falls outside of that plausibility to make the world realistic and plausible within the realms of that. Other things like, I reference science fiction particularly in a, uh, on this because that's where I see more implausibilities happen depending on how you're setting that. One of the other elements that I personally feel are important to good storytelling is good world building. This is, this is important. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to have extensive world building in every scenario. Absolutely not. 
but there's I feel like there needs to be some element of world building in there, even if minor, but done well. And this really helps set the tone and the feel of the book. Now, world building isn't exclusive to things like science fiction and fantasy. You can have world building in a modern fictional setting as well. And you want to make things like that plausible. Okay, so when it comes to plausibility and storytelling, as some examples of that, there was an episode of The Last of Us that I was watching a while back. And the caption on the screen read, 10 miles west of Boston. And what it was a mountain river valley with these big, massively tall mountains. And I looked at that and I'm like, there's no way that this is 10 miles west of Boston. Like, there's just no way. That is not what the geography of North America looks like in that part of North America. And for me, that almost kind of broke the story a little bit because the plausibility of seeing that there, it just didn't work within the world trade. This isn't some foreign world. It's not some foreign land. Uh, it's North America and the geography just didn't match the claimed location on screen. So that's an issue that I think really kind of, for me at least, breaks the story. When something is put into the story that just doesn't plausibly realistic for the story that you're telling and the setting in which you're telling it. This could apply to characterization, as we discussed in the earlier uh, example, or it could even apply to the world in which we're in to begin with. And that's one example. Plausibility just didn't work for me there. The next thing that I want to have within this is world building. Now, world building is important. It's for any story, really, and it doesn't have to be extensive world building. I'm not saying that you have to have like a whole bunch of world building going on and around you within your works and your world. You don't need extensive detailed world building at all. It can be minor, it can be simple, but it's got to be done well. I got to feel like I understand the world in which this story is taking place for me to really feel like I could really get into that book and really understand it. I want to feel that I could be there with the characters, whether that's our world or it's a different world, whether that's a different world in science fiction on another planet somewhere out there in the universe, or whether it's a different fantasy world. Like we see in the Cosmo, which by the way, I'm a huge fan of Brandon Sanderson, as you know, I do feel like Brandon Sanderson has some of the best, most extensive and best world building there is. I love Roshar, for example. Probably my favorite Cosmo world. I've spent so much time there after all. And I absolutely love Roshar and the world building surrounding Roshar and the Cosmo in general. The thing with Brandon Sanderson too, has a Great example of fantastic world building. Brandon Sanderson didn't just build a world. He isn't a world builder, he's a universe builder and the Cosmere is his universe. He goes so far beyond just the traditional fantasy world building. Like we see in so many fantasy books, he's created a whole universe of different planets within the Cosmere. And that is just incredible. And I think that is one of the best examples of fantastic world building that we've ever seen in any book anywhere. Another thing that we have to have any good storytelling and I think is character good character development now again this doesn't necessarily have to be in every single book depending on what type of book you're reading character development isn't necessarily a essential essentially but having flat and two-dimensional characters doesn't really help us get into the books themselves now of course we don't need every character to have character development Minor characters can stay minor flat two-dimensional. They don't matter. They're really just a minor supporting role to your main group cast of characters But those main characters that we're following throughout the story We want to get to know them. We want to understand them. We want to grow with them as readers and That character development is so important to getting us connected and attached and want to be part of that world as well So you can have great will world building and poor characters development virtually none, and it's just boring as for which is more important for me, I don't, I'm not really sure actually. On the other hand, if you have absolutely incredible characters and really bad world building, I'd probably keep reading just for the characters themselves. You know, getting to know them and go along with them a little bit more. So, you know, both, I think world building and characterization and character development, I think that goes hand in hand to really make a great read. Because the world, the universe in which you're in, can almost be like a character themselves as we develop that world and learn more about it. Just as we do with our characters, they progress through the story and going through their story arcs. And one last thing I'll mention that makes a good element of storytelling, I think, is going to be pacing. Pacing is really important to balance well and effectively, I feel. You know, a slow burns are good. Sanderson's really famous for that, his slow burns followed by the Sanderlange. But also, uh, you can have a really fast-paced book as well. Uh, that kind of keeps your page turn or wanting to come back over and over and over again to this world. I think both have their benefits and aspects of that. 
but having the pacing mixed properly with world building and characterization I think is important. Having those moments in our stories where, the, where we're just kind of chilling with the characters and nothing's really happening, but we're kind of getting to know them and learn more about them and see their personality when everything's chill and relaxed, I think is really good. And we could have that those moments of slow burn coupled with those moments of fast paced action, which is kind of what I like about Sanderson actually. He does that really well, I feel, having that right mix and balance within his stories, which just makes it so much better, honestly, in my opinion. So, so having that pacing can be an important aspect of whether or not that book ends up being a fantastic or good read or even the series itself. Um, if you have a really slow burn and you don't have anything to kind of keep your interest, that can turn out to be a really poor book. So mixing the balance right is so important. Anyway, those are my, just my thoughts on what makes a good story, elements of good storytelling. I would love to hear from you down below what you're thinking or what you feel are elements of good storytelling. You can join me over on the Dragon's Dead Discord. I'd love to hear from you there. You can also, of course, uh, join me over on Hardcover, Book Threads, Bookstagram, all that good stuff. That'll be linked below as well. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you. So as always, like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, thanks for watching. And until next time, keep on reading. Bye.